Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric, this being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of City on a Hill, a great season finale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I like I figured as much because a lot of stuff got resolved last episode to a certain extent. This is kind of very much like the epilogue, or rather, con- like full blown. Yeah, epilogue would be more like the more apt description because we're just seeing like every storyline close up to a certain extent. So let's kind of break things down. First and foremost, we have Guy telling DeCourcy, like, oh, I'm, you know, obviously prosecuting Kelvin. Yes, he might not have pulled the trigger, but he was still kind of responsible with a lot of the death and stuff like that. The Anton might have been a part of well, the Anton calls and stuff like that. So it's kind of sad that, like, yeah, Kelvin didn't pull the trigger on a lot of stuff, but he st- he wasn't in as much of the wrong as Anton was, but it's still kind of the thing of like, yeah, you were aware what your brother was a part of. You were just as much of a part of it. Like, yeah, he may have never pulled a trigger on in- those three deaths a uh, couple episodes back, you know, Junior and his boys. Yeah, he may not have been responsible. He may not have pulled a trigger, but he still helped. He threw out like that smoke grenade and gave Anton cover to make sure that all happened, so... So Guy wants to go after that. Uh, apparently, timeline-wise, uh, based on what Guy was saying, Rodney King had uh, that happened, um, and so LA's kind of like on a fire, basically because of, I think he was talking about like was it was it this or am I blurring line? I think it was it. Yeah, like there were uh, one of like some cops or whatever were prosecuted and some weren't. Obviously, he doesn't want what happened there to happen here with the whole Kelvin thing because for him it's like there's like five white people on the uh, jury and like seven black people and the course he's like right so you want me to be up there to be your black your token black to kind of skew things in your favor or whatever and he's like no nah, I just want you to do your fucking job so uh, of course he just kind of goes with the flow of it. it's my job but like obviously he's not really doing all that he can to help to be fair, he also kind of wants Kelvin to go down, too, because it's like, once again, kind of a little based on what Eloise said last episode, but I think it's just in general, like, you know, it's not about justice. It is simply about revenge. It's like, he didn't know he was going to feel as bad as he did about Anton dying, like, you know, having just lost a child to see a mother breaking down like that. He didn't want things to go down that way. That is why he's trying to get justice for um, Anton in the sense of taking down um, the cop that shot him because it was like, yeah, it was an execution, so... He actually goes to Jackie uh, looking for help on that front of, uh, because he's actually telling Jackie, like, because Jackie basically gets told by Karen, it's like, oh, you're not, you don't even have to worry about getting sent to uh, Lakeview or whatever. Uh, In actuality, you're about to get screwed over super hard because there's going to be a review coming up about all that, and you could print, uh, you're not just going to get demoted to a, a remote place. It's like, no, you could lose your job. And he talks about a particular mayor of Providence. It's like, oh yeah, that guy's my hero. He came, he came from nothing, had an amazing career, got caught up in all of that. Like, because apparently, like he assaulted the guy that was having an affair with his wife. And it's like, yeah, they forced him to resign. He came back and got reelected for mayor. It's like, yeah, in a weird, twisted way, that is kind of an inspiring story. I, I guess it's like, oh. But also maybe the, the argument could that that story is like, oh, no matter how much you fuck up, like if if you grease the right palms, you know, uh, the power influence can go a very long way. That's it's actually kind of like a sad moral of that story. It's not like a oh, like you know, it's like oh, perseverance and everything. It's like nah, you, you probably grease the right palms was able to kind of do it. So and it's also like the fact is that Jackie's saying is he's, he's, uh, that that's his hero. It's like oh yeah, the guy can't be that much of a good guy. If Jackie's complimenting him. Like, oh, he's my hero, you know. So. Obviously, Karen's kind of excited about this, but Jackie's like, okay, uh, I'm going to bring down this cop that killed Anton. It was like, you know, the bullet back in his head speaks otherwise, saying that this was an execution. So if I can prove this to you, could you kind of make this whole OPR thing go away? And she's like, at first, she's kind of like, I don't care. But he's like, yeah, but um, I forgot how he necessarily swung it for her. because at first he was saying, like, yeah, this will get you in the White House, get you, uh, you know, you'll be able to sit with Bill and Hillary. Uh, but she's like, yeah, she has no interest in that. But uh, kind of uh, putting away, like, a, um, uh, a bad cop or whatever is kind of, I think, what he was kind of leaning on. But uh, she kind of agrees, but it's like, you have to actually bring me something. So he confronts the cop. And obviously it turns into that Blue Veil conversation because it's like, right, you got a wife and kid, you're doing, you, you were aiming for this, you worked here. Um, so obviously you have a you could have a like long career in front of you. Obviously for it's a you know like is it a blue veil thing of like right uh, if I 
if I don't say anything, apparently I'm going to be held in contempt, you know, and locked up for perjury. So most of my life is going to be going away. Or I can rat on my partner or rat on home dude and then end up, you know, being ostracized by the rest of the cops. Like my career is pretty much dead at that point. And, you know, Jackie's like, yeah, but at the very least you'll still have that nice car of yours you've got. So they end up kind of going for a talk. And he ends up bringing this to Karen. And she's like, all right. Like, obviously, they're going to bring down the hammer on him. But despite what Karen did, it wasn't enough to swing things in Jackie's favor because they are still going to um, go go through with the review. She wasn't able to kind of stop it uh, from happening. And it's like, there's, you know, even if, if he loses this, obviously there's a good chance he'll lose his badge. But also, like, there is a way to kind of fight it, but the conversation is, well, will you try and fight it? It's, it's a whole thing, but we'll kind of get to that later on because um, other things that kind of break down. Obviously, um, Grace and um, Siobhan's conversation, that's a complicated one because for her, like, the fact is that she's asking for help about Kelvin, but it's like, after all I've been through, but Grace is also talking about what she's been through as well. And it's like, I had to watch my son die. And it's like, I had to watch my baby, my baby died inside of me. And Grace is like, I'm sorry. And she's like, that right there, it's in, it spoke volumes to Siobhan because it's like, and you should have opened with that. Because despite all this, you came immediately to me asking for favors, helping with Kelvin and everything. But you didn't even start off by being like, I'm sorry. Because it was your son that made this all happen and everything. So it is. And it's and for sadly, it's a situation where it's like Siobhan isn't ready to forgive her yet for her part to play and everything. Like forgive that family. But for her, she does want to help Cal Kelvin. But it's, she feels like there's nothing she can do. Because she doesn't believe that someone like Kelvin should go to jail because it's like, yeah, I'm not saying he's innocent, but like to basically to send another black kid to jail and like he's he's been on the straight and narrow. He's been a good kid his entire life. This could send him spiraling down the wrong path is kind of what she was worried about, you know, so. So it was a whole conversation on that part, obviously in the courtroom, um. Obviously, Guy is trying to push his perspectives on the narrative. Obviously, uh, Kelvin's lawyer is trying to kind of paint him in a certain light by putting Grace on the stand and stuff like that. Um, obviously, Grace trying to paint the narrative of, like, I I've raised my boys to be good. Um, I know my son well. It's like, well, if you knew your son well, uh, how did you not know about all the drugs and criminal activity him and your uh, your other son were up to, you know? And it's like, I like to believe, I like to see the good in people. And she's like, don't you? And, um, you know, so, but then Guy crossed the line because he threw in Siobhan and DeCourcy's situation. DeCourcy's almost like, no, you didn't, you bastard. And obviously Siobhan's in the courtroom too hearing this. And then immediately Grace kind of attacks back. It's like, yeah, like the fact is normal um, them statistically the person who people who get shot are black people especially in that neighborhood she's in and it's like why is it that it none of that mattered before now but de Corsi and his uh, wife they live in a certain neighborhood so kind of showing you it's it's like oh on, you only care about a certain group of black people who can kind of like i think live in that white class neighborhood it's kind of what she was getting at, and Siobhan leaves, and of course he follows her, but you can tell even Grace kind of felt bad about it, because uh, even Kelvin was almost looking like, damn, mom, I wish she hadn't crossed that line, but uh, Siobhan doesn't blame her, because she was like, she was attacked, so she attacked me, it's, it was a natural response for her, it's like, we have this constant back and forth, the revenge is kind of tit for tat, it's like, for her, it's like a never-ending cycle, like, the fact is, it's kind of like, we're up here kind of fighting and doing all this to each other when we should be kind of coming together it's just and have you know for her it's like she was hoping to come there to kind of feel something about all of this she kind of wanted to see grace suffer like she suffered but it's like for what like we're just constantly in this pain of cycle and hurt uh, a pain of suffering and hurting each other and it's just it's too much like all it did at the end of the day is bring back the pain of what they lost and to have a guy like guy use their pain to try and like attack someone like her her character attack her like that is crossing the line and it's just too much and of course he confronts him about it he's like you rat bastard he's like yeah on the best day you know, so you would 
I guess for him, he's kind of doesn't care. It's like, yeah, I'm a win by any means, but also it's like the situation with the Corsi. It's almost like for him. I, I wonder if Guy would have been like, oh, you don't like the way I operate. You can always leave. No one's really needing to stick around. I guess it's like because the optics of having the Corsi on his side, but it's like, oh, things are swinging his way more so than anything. So he probably kind of felt super confident. So it's like, yeah, I don't even kind of need you. You want to be pissed, storm all. Whatever, or maybe he maybe he's in a position where he's kind of like, oh, what the fuck are you going to do to Corsi? Absolutely nothing. They get back in the courtroom after Kelvin is talking with his lawyer about what he wants to do. He wants to try and get on the stand to kind of sway um, the court's opinion and stuff like that, uh, because nothing else they're doing is working in favor because they are going to lose this. And so he does get up there and he's kind of trying to. Uh, talk about his mom a little bit then he's like my mom made us read the bible you know and we try to go down that path but we kind of did the opposite and he just straight up says i'm guilty and it's like whoa 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 it shocked everybody obviously dan's kind of happy but it's like you know um de course he's like dirty win he's like ah oh, wins a win and he just kind of walks away and that's the effed up thing like he he doesn't feel the guilt that like you know um it's not what the course like it's kind of, it's what the course he wanted, but now that he had it, it's not what he wanted, you know. Uh, that's that complicated thing about revenge, you know. And I think for Calvin, he legitimately felt like he was going to lose anyway. But also, I think for him, it's like I have to be punished because I shouldn't be able to get a like. I I think he's he's seeing all that his mom's being put through, and I think for him, he wanted to make things easier on her, like an extended trial, her kind of be put on stand to have people kind of tear into her, to have someone like Guy attack his mom like that it's like no i'm not going to put my mom through this she's already had to be through too much anton now me it's like no i'm not going to do this to her so he wanted to make i think it easier on her you know and sadly we would see later on um when he's in prison he has a black eye because you know and she's like baby just call me kelvin and she's like i love you and he's like don't even do that don't even cry for me because I don't want that to be the last thing I remember. Because if I see you like that, that's all I'm going to be able to think about. And I need to think about other things. Because she's still trying to paint him as a good boy. Because in court, she told that story about someone else being cold and him giving that jacket to the kid. Shivering or whatever. And an old lady had um, fallen, slipped on ice and hit her head. He was freezing because he no longer had his jacket. But he still stayed with that person until an ambulance arrived. Showing like, this is the good natured kid he is. Uh, but he was trying to tell his mom, he's like, that's, you know, that was a long time ago. I'm not that kid anymore. But she's like, I know there's that good inside of you. He was even telling her, don't come back next week. Because for him, it's like, there's going to be some things he's going to have to do and focus on just to survive in this place. Yeah, so. It is a situation born from Kelvin's own circumstances. But obviously the system... And everything kind of played its role, kind of getting them there. It's like, once again, it's kind of the sad thing of, like, Anton doesn't have to pay the price. You can, you can make the argument he kind of got off easy. Kelvin didn't. And once again, this was Anton saying. Kelvin all along the way was kind of like, Anton, maybe we shouldn't do this. But Anton never really listened to him. So it's, it is kind of sad at the end of the day. Um, because of everything, because Kelvin is locked up, uh, Grace ended up getting... Um, kicked out like she couldn't stay there anymore like if you have a a child or whatever or, or no a family member in prison you kind of get kicked out of the, the hud housing and she did but at the end of her leaving like all those people are gathered around clapping because despite everything she has done so much for the community even home dude being like oh do they know about the 20 million you got and she's like no let them just be able to bask in like the improvements that the money is able to do like she doesn't want to take any glory or in um any um praise for it so um, some other things that went down in this episode. We have Jackie coming across a scene, and I was like, there were some dead bodies. I was like, did Maeve do this, or is she one of... And we see the tattoo, and you're like, oh, wow, she's one of the dead bodies. That sucks. That's actually kind of depressing. It's like, wow. Uh, immediately afterwards, too, and he was just kind of like, oh, well. And I was wondering whether or not he was going to go back home and bring that up to Jenny or whatever. He kind of brings up the subject, but she's like, yeah, you might be mad at me, but I feel good. Like, I actually helped her. I'm sure she's back, you know, off somewhere at a beach or whatever. And I was wondering whether he was going to throw that in her face. Because yeah, Jackie can't be petty like that, but I wasn't sure how he was going to do it. But hearing the way she was talking, I think for him, it's like how good she felt about it. It's like, no, nah, he's not going to take that away from her, you know? Um, I think it was a conversation about even when we try to do the good things, like the, even when we try to do a good thing, like we never know like the ramifications or just like how everything's going to shake out in this particular case. So 
Um, at the end of the day, he decided not to tell her. He ended up kind of dancing with her, you know, instead. Um, and kind of humming the song. It's just like, once again, showcasing like how sweet Jackie can actually be when he actually tries to be a decent human being. Um, even a moment he has with Benny, she's stressing about looking into the, um, her college acceptance or not. And so... Jackie's kind of there for her, and obviously it turns out she did get accepted. Uh, and obviously it, it scares him because it's like, right, like, once again, it's that conversation of like, right, my our, our baby girl was under our roof, and what happened to her happened to her. It's like, if she's always that far away from us, like, you know, it's just like, she, he, he, he loves her, obviously, and wants to keep her, you know. You know, he, he even said this sweet thing with Ginny at one point in time where he was like, Honestly, like, uh, he was quoting someone as saying, like, all right, like, time travel is going to be available at one point in time. And for him, it's like, I'd like to go back in time to the moment um, Benny was born. And he was like, um, I'd stay in that moment, you know. And it was like, because things were simpler back then. And uh, Jenny's like, yeah, well, not as simple as you think, but it was still that thing. You could see that, like, she was smiling because it's like, right, like, it's a moment, like, it's not just the audience. It's moments like that showing Ginny just, like, how sweet Jackie is. It's probably moments like that that made her, like, fall for him in the first place, you know? Which that kind of leads into a really interesting conversation where um, Jackie and her are laying in bed. And he's, and she's like, why did you choose me? And obviously he makes, like, a wisecrack at first. But then he's very open where it's like he could tell by the way she walked that she'd been through hell. It's like, not the same thing as him, but her own version of hell. And so it was a thing of like, here's someone else that's kind of been through some shit. Like, maybe maybe we should be together. Like, I don't know, maybe we, I think like, we can find a way to kind of swim our way through like, the bounds of shit that like, compiled in their lives to get to where they were. So it's like, maybe we can help each other find a way through it all. Like, maybe that's what Jackie was thinking. He never really fully elaborated on it. Uh, but Jackie did learn from her aunt where her dad lives, but Jackie was like, well, fuck, he's in Boston? Let sleeping dogs lie, ticks and all, just kind of let it go, Jennifer, but obviously, you know, Jenny's not going to. Um, you had the whole Kathy situation, which kind of was crazy, um, obviously, she's there with her kids, home dude rolls up, is like, yo, you've been avoiding me, you owe me some money. I'm surprised we still never got that conversation about, yo, kick, you throw out my damn drugs. But it's like, the way the opening card was opening, uh, said it was like, oh, kick knew what her mom was doing and dumped out the drugs. Because I guess it's like Frankie brought like crime and all that into their life. And so that's how things ended up. So I guess for her, it's like you doing all this in our lives. I didn't take it as that. I thought she was just trying to punish her mom regardless. But I guess for her, it's like, right, dad's dead because of all the stuff he got mixed up in. You mixed up in some stuff is just going to get you dead. And who are we going to have? No one, you know? Because obviously, they've lost touch with um, their grandparents. So. But, um. So now she's doing everything she can to avoid him. Obviously, like, he's waiting outside for her. I wasn't expecting her to pull the gun out and shoot him. And I was like, wow, you were just so getting used to murdering people, ain't you? Uh, that's interesting. Uh, home dude kept stepping to her, too. I didn't know. I guess maybe he underestimated, like, oh, you're not going to pull the trigger. It's like, oh, you poor bastard. If only you knew that she popped Jimmy Ryan earlier this season, you would have known not to step to her like that. But she puts him down. I don't know whether his just body being there, like, no one found it. Because uh, she immediately goes there. It's like, hey, kids, let's get out of here, pack up their stuff. We're moving to Florida, which kick is like, why are we leaving? Obviously, Boston's not, you know... It's like, oh, like, your your cousins are there, Corey's there. Uh, the fact is that um, you can make new friends, be at a better school. And it's like, you know, it's a situation where it's like, life is the way it is in Boston. And it's like, for her, it's a thing of, I think for her, it's like, even if that situation wasn't what it was, it's like, what kind of life can we have in Boston? And like, living in a piece of shit place like this, so what do we... You know, so we, she needs a fresh start. Plus, I'm thinking it is mainly about, right, because his associates might come after me when the time comes, so I need a bail. Granted, there's always a chance they might try and follow, follow you in Florida, but, it, like, as long as you're not leaving no forwarding address, I think it'd be hard for them to find you. But, uh, yeah, reminding Kick, like, oh, who's your dad? Jimmy Ryan. Who's your mom? Kathy Ryan. It's like, you're fucking straight. That's the case, so. Bounces, flips Boston off, so... 
not what I was expecting from that story. I did. I don't know what I expected. I wasn't. I didn't. I, I, I'm wondering potentially is this a close on Kathy's story or will there be more? That'd be kind of interesting if this ends up encapsulating and ending the uh, Ryan family arc. You know, it's like oh, you know, her killing. You know, Frankie's dead. Ryan's. Um, I mean, the, it still sparks. There are still sparks of it because. Corey's got her kids, Kathy's got hers, so it still kind of continues in that way, but I don't know if they're, I don't know, I, I, I don't feel like they're just going to let her get away with that skull free, like, there's going to be ramifications, there has to be, uh, we'll see whether it ends up being the case, like I said, it could just be like potentially setting up an exit from the story, but I don't know. I love you have your boy Jackie in front of the meeting and look at I love that like just that like that big old smile he has as he's bringing up all this stuff because it's like oh yeah you're informers what about Clay Roach and Jimmy Ryan it's like oh he's like but their their murders were kind of out of my purview I'm working like a dozen cases so that's not really my place it's like oh you're really not going to investigate you know because it's basically trying to say like hey they had enemies of their own to be fair Jimmy Ryan did manage to get immunity for like the stuff he did, so it's like, yeah, you know, eventually, like his, I mean, it's like, as he was trying to say, they've got enemies of their own that are gonna come and, you know, this was only like a matter of time, but what it really comes down to is, um, Holly Gunner is what this really comes down to, and so it seems like Salvi kind of turned on um, the moment, like everything came like, um, turned like. I, Either he found, like, oh, this is an opportunity to screw Jackie over, or maybe in his mind, this is an opportunity to make things right because Jackie shouldn't have a badge. We did a lot of terrible stuff. There's so much we got away with, so Jackie doesn't deserve a badge. Like, I'm, and maybe in his own twisted way, it was, I mean, not in his own twisted way, but in his own mind, maybe he thought he was helping Jackie. Or maybe he just thought, I'm doing the world a favor by getting rid of Jackie's badge. Or it could be just self preservation. Oh, they're trying to put the screws to me, or maybe I should put the screws to Jackie before they try and turn us around and put the screws in me or before Jackie has a chance to put the screws in me because they came to a uh, a mutual destruction um, mutually assured destruction type of thing where it's like oh you got dirt on me I've got dirt on you so let let's let bygones be bygones they set that up earlier in the season but uh nevertheless at the end of the day um, he left saying like yeah like the fact of the matter is Holly uh, smoked some crack or what, um, cocaine or what, took too much cocaine and OD'd. I, trying to protect her and her family and everything, ended up dumping her off at the hospital thinking my friend was going to do something to be able to help her because I didn't want her to die. So he tried to, he tried to spin the narrative of like, the fact is, it isn't on me. She's the one that was getting high. She OD'd. I actually saved her life. But am I getting fucking thanked for that? No, I'm being crucified for it. So, and he just kind of bounces because he was like, oh, since we kind of got rid of the pleasant cheese, all right, let's kind of like cut the shit and get straight to it. So he got him bounces. And you had this look on Karen's face like, oh, huh. I wasn't sure what that necessarily meant, but then she shows up later on at the bar, and it's kind of like, yep, they're taking his badge and everything. And ultimately, Karen is getting some enjoyment out of it, because it's like, right, you kind of don't deserve, after everything you've done, not just a holiday, everything you've gotten away with, you don't deserve to keep your badge. So, it is a situation where... Um, it's been the conversation of like, what would Jackie do if he didn't have his badge? Because despite him helping, you know, uh, take down the cop who ended up killing Anton, it, it didn't help in the long run. So, um, once again, Karen's just smiling because I think for her, it's just like, yeah, I've won. It's just, it wasn't just professionally. It was also just her being petty, too. She just wanted to rub it in Jackie's face. She, she finally got rid of like, let's face it, Jackie's a cockroach. Uh, kind of finally got rid of uh, one of probably many cockroaches within the FBI. So it kind of helps her out, kind of cleaning house a little bit. Um, I, what I love about it, too, is there's not like no celebratory thing of like, oh, saying goodbye to Jackie. Like, oh, I have to be fair. It's the thing of like, most people don't like Jackie. Most people tolerate Jackie because Jackie has most people by the balls. So he at the end of the day, he doesn't have anyone sending him off and saying like this and that. The closest thing he got to that was like, his moment with the Corsi, that's the closest he got because that shows you like, oh, at the end of the day, you know, what that means and what he's got. But I guess because he's kind of on the back end like this, that made him decide to go visit Father Doyle. And it's like, right. So my, let me confess, uh, my wife doesn't know about the Maeve thing. I need you to keep that quiet. He's also like, plus, um, I know 
the shady stuff that you've been up to. He's like, that money I gave you, it's like, it didn't go to the church. You stole it. And I also found out you've been sending it back to the um, IRA. I'm not too surprised by that. Because I figured just like, like I said, the Maven him thing, it, my initial thought was like, he's connected with it and maybe he was hiding out too. It's just like, because there's no way knowing what he knows could he just be so casually okay with like, like, like I said, when Maeve and him were talking like in an earlier episode, she was so cheeky with him. She was just kind of being like, not like, it didn't seem like a, a, a father who like, as in priest who knew her secrets. It just seemed like someone who's kind of in the same boat. So for him, he talks about everything that's going on, but it's like for Jackie, it's like, I, I don't care. Your situation is your situation. But, um, all he's just saying is that you're not going to send any more money back there. Or I can get you deported, which is like, if I go back there, I'm good as dead. It's like, so, we've come to a deal. And he's like, oh, you're an effing demon. I don't know why I didn't just say fucking demon, sorry. Um, but he's like, yeah, an exorcism and everything. And just as Doyle does all the things, he grabs his hand, breaks his thumb, and is like, yeah, I fucking own you. So, what that looks like going forward, I don't know. Like, maybe he's planning on potentially using that in the future to kind of... Well, I was about to say maybe in the future, or maybe at the time it was his plan to kind of potentially use that as a means of kind of getting his badge back. But with things playing out later on, it seems like that's not the case, but who knows. Um, the sad thing is, when Jackie builds relationships like that, they come back to screw him in some shape or form. In particular, the Clay Roach thing, because of the way he pushed Clay Roach things played out the way they did. So, I, I don't know. I'm really interested to see kind of where that dynamic could potentially go in the future. But uh, as I brought up, you had the DeCourcy and... Um, DeCourcy and... Um, Jackie uh, scene. Whereas, like, DeCourcy knows about, like, you know, what happened to Jackie. And is like, oh, like, you're going to try and, like fight it away, because he also brings up, he's like, yo, if I would ask you to add that OPR thing to, like, show up and speak a word of something about me, what, would you have done it? And then, of course, he just stares up a few seconds, he's like, you know what, you know what, never mind, don't, don't even answer, he's like, I don't even want to know your answer. Um, but, um, yeah, a, a big interesting development that ends up getting revealed is Kev, um, Kelvin died in prison, uh, someone ba uh, bashed his skull in, and obviously in that moment, of course, he's like, man, like, I actually feel bad for him. And it's like, now it's like, I, this is what I wanted. Like, once again, it's not justice. It was simply revenge. And it's like, now that I got it, like, I feel bad. Like, I knew putting Kelvin in prison that he wouldn't survive. It's like, I put, it's like, I loaded the gun and pulled the trigger myself, you know, which obviously like, you know, uh, Jackie trying to tell him like, that's not the case. He's like, even saying like, you know, of course, we've all sinned. Like, so it's not like, you know, you doing what you did. You were just doing your job at the end of the day. Um, but maybe the argument could be that's just by Jackie trying to appease because, you know, trying to tell the Corsi that at the end of the day, it's like, no, you care. Cause he's like, um, I, why do I care? Like, I didn't think I cared. He's like, yeah, you do because that's who you are today. And like, you know, once again, trying to make him feel better by being like, you are a good person. The fact is that you do care speaks volumes. It just proves that point even more so. But, uh, Along with all of that, um, I'd skipped over it, like, you know, within the confines of the episode, but there's also the uh, conversation that Siobhan has with her mom about what she's going to do, that she's going to leave her law firm, and that she wants to start working for the, uh, was it, ACLU, um, I believe, I'm, I'm not, hopefully I'm not mixing up those initials, I might be, uh, but her mom is kind of like, whoa, that's kind of a, a shift, a sharp turn, um, but for her, it's like she feels like she could do so much better in a job like that. She could help out so much more because she wants to. She wants to kind of fix this broken system, and broken it really is. And for her, it's like, you know, and her mom, it's like, you know, if this is what you want. Like, because she wants her mom's, like, like to point in the right direction. But she's like, no, at the end of the day, the choice has to be yours. But, you know, you are the daughter I raised, so I know that, you know, you'll do what is right for you, what, what my, you know, Siobhan Keys will do what is best, you know, and she brings it up to Corsi, which the Corsi things like considering everything she's been through, maybe this isn't, you know, really the right time to kind of be thinking about that. But it's like if she works with the ACLU, it's like we're going to be on opposite sides. It's like it's going to put you in between Anton's and me in the future, you know, uh, another Anton and me in the future, you know, so. 
But um, there was that ending though, where um, Grace obviously. It's not just Anton and Kelvin. It's all the death. It's Junior. It's Raina. It's just every all the death that happened, and obviously they're gathered at the church, and Siobhan and uh, the course here there, and it you know Grace is holding a picture of her children, and despite everything, Siobhan comes over and hugs her. You know, and I think that speaks volumes. Like maybe maybe you know in this moment of forgiveness, it's like you know she just lost another child. It's like. Once again, it's like the system is so broken that that's why we're here. And that that to me is the most heartbreaking thing, too, is like there's no happy ending in this for no one. I mean, to be fair, there were like no happy endings at the end of season one. There definitely aren't any here either, you know. Um, Grace is kind of alone, like probably like her reputation and everything is tarnished after everything. But also like both of her sons are dead. It's like. I think this is definitely going to have a major, like, because you see the Corsi walking because he's blaming us because it's like, right, my need for revenge. So maybe he's going to be more okay with uh, Siobhan's decision to, you know, shift careers and everything. And it's like, I'm big, I'm curious, like, what this means for him career wise after, like, what Dan pulled in the, um, in the, uh, courtroom and everything. Like, obviously, that didn't sit well with him. Like, how this all, how he reflects on a lot of this. He'd even said this interesting thing to Jackie, too, where he was like, you know, that if if you do try to reappeal, like, you know, because he'd have to go to court to get his badge back and everything um, if he tries to, you know, fight this um, and everything. Because even Jackie was like, yeah, I got lawyers and everything. But um, it was almost kind of like, the course, was almost saying like, yeah, that was a case I would testify. So I think things would sway a little bit more in his favor because it seemed like he was willing to kind of help Jackie out in that regard. Um, another storyline they set up, well, uh, well, yeah, I'd say set up, is Jenny visiting her dad and then there's a lady there and she's like, yeah, I'm Jenny, his daughter. And she's like, whoa, 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 he's got nothing to say. You, I'm like, wait, what the hell does that mean? What do you mean he has nothing to say to her? The woman he, mal- the his daughter that he, mal- what? What do you, no, that doesn't make any sense. So then I'm like, okay, so either one, there's more to the story that ja- that Jenny doesn't remember or doesn't know. Because part of me is like, could it be that like, I hope it's not this. I hope we don't find out that Jackie's been milking him for money. That yet, yeah, because like obviously uh, her mother has picked uh, painted him as like the um, mooch. I hope we don't find out that he's been milking money from Joe or they like he's known the entire time that Joe was. Alive. I hope that's not the case. I like to believe. What I'm believing is, oh, he beat the ever-living shit out of him or something like that um, and threatened him. And that's why he wants to have no interaction with Jenny because he doesn't want Jack, the wrath of Jackie. I'd feel at least a little bit better thinking like, okay, Jackie's a good, decent human being in that regard if that's the case. I know I'm kind of advocating violence. I'm not trying to advocate violence. It's just a situation where it's like, yeah, he did something scummy. And I like to believe her husband hurt her back on that. I hope we don't find out he didn't. But I'm like, what the hell? What else? Cause like, what else could that be? I don't know. I really don't know. And it's just kind of that's where we left things off. There. Um, another element to this is the very ending where we have Jackie just sitting there and being like, "Fuck you," and just saying like, "If they want it, they can have it." And he throws away his badge. So I'm like, oh, so he's. That's why I was thinking like, yo, I thought the whole. Uh, Father Doyle thing. Well, he does say it later on that, like, oh, he's going to be security at the church. So, yeah, he's still going to have a, a working gig, I guess. It's kind of what he's setting up. But it's like, he's not going to have his badge anymore. He kind of doesn't care to, it seems like. Um, which I think is so fascinating. I'm like, wow. Especially because that badge has defined him for so long. But, but I guess it's like, despite everything, what do I have to show for it? No friends celebrating my, like, final farewell and stuff like that. Um... I have nothing at the end of the day, so I guess for him it's like, what what have I accomplished? Like, what do I have to my name? All I have are my stories, and they don't mean anything. Plus, I guess for him it's like, yeah, that badge just cost me a lot. My soul, I'll, you know, the way I've treated people, which has come to backlash me and have like the most terrible ramifications. Like, just who he is as a human being, maybe he doesn't like who he was with this badge. So maybe this presents him an opportunity to change, to be better. Once again. How this whole Father Doyle thing would play out in the future would be another thing to consider with all of this. So, 
at the time of me recording this, which is May 16th, like well, almost 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, it hasn't been confirmed whether or not Showtime is renewing or canceling uh, City on a Hill. I hope it comes back for a third season because I'd love to see where we go. You know, Jackie without a badge, what this storyline means for DeCourcy and Siobhan, like what new paths this leads for them, um, Jenny and everything with her dad. Uh, once again, whether we're done with Kathy's storyline or will we see more of that in Florida, will be there, there'll be stuff that brings her back to Boston, um, potentially, uh, I don't know, like, uh, there's, so, like I said, I mean, much like season one, a lot of those, for some of those threads continued, but it was more so like a new arc was done, so I'm sure a lot of these threads would potentially continue in the third season, but it'd be a new arc, new case, new everything, so... Like I said, plus the Father Doyle thing. Like I'm still so curious like what that will potentially turn into. I get the feeling, too, that Jenny's eventually going to find out about Maeve, and that's going to be devastating, especially if she finds out that Jackie knows. I think there's probably going to be a situation where Jackie kind of hasn't to admit. Like, she's about to do something. He's like, all right, I'm going to tell you the truth. Maeve, she's dead. Like, But I don't I don't see him trying to take that away from her anymore because it's like she felt so good about it. Like, that's why he didn't want to tell her the truth. But we'll see. And also, just in general, when it comes to Jackie, obviously, he even without in the process of losing his badge, he still does some dickish stuff, the whole, like, Father Doyle thing, but, so, we can't expect Jackie to go in full, uh, full-blown straight and narrow, but the quest- question then becomes, he has done a lot to redeem himself this season. Yes, it's all been about self-preservation and helping himself in the long run, but still, begs the question... Can he ever be fully redeemed considering everything that he's done? Yes, he's a... Can, let's not uh, mess around. He is a scumbag. But he can be a scumbag with a heart of gold. So, like I said, I hope the show comes back for a third season because I'd love to see where all of this would take us going forward. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about to the next time we meet. Be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.